Welcome to our daily Mass. Today's Mass will be celebrated by our parochial vicar, Father Bill Williams. Please rise. As we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we are called to be mindful of God's mercy and his love. Lord, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You've come to call sinners Christ, have mercy. And you were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who gave the priest St. John an outstanding dedication to perfect self-denial and love of the cross, grant that by imitating his, him closely at all times, we may come to contemplate the etern eternally your glory. O Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and you to the Holy Spirit, and God forever and ever. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, proclaiming the glory of the solemnity of the words of wisdom, for I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear, much trembling, and my message and my proclamation were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of spirit and power, so that your faith might rest not on the human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet we do speak of a wisdom to those who are mature, not of a wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. Rather, we seek God's wisdom, mysteriously hidden, which God predetermined before the age of our of our glory, which none of the rulers of his age knew. For if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord, the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what eye has not seen, and ear has not heard, and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him. This spirit has re was revealed to those through the spirit. The word of the Lord. The mouth of the just murmurs wisdom. The mouth of the just murmurs wisdom. Trust in the Lord and do good, that you may dwell in the land and be fed in security. Take delight in the Lord, that he will grant you your heart's request. The mouth of the just murmurs wisdom. Commit to the Lord your way. Trust in him, and he will act. He will make justice dawn for you like the light. Bright as the noonday shall your vindication. The mouth of the just murmurs wisdom. The mouth of the just tells of the wisdom and his tongue utters what is right. The law of, of his God is in his heart and his steps do not falter. The mouth of the wisdom is wisdom. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. 
Blessed are the poor in spirit, the kingdom of God is theirs. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Great crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and addressed them. If anyone comes to me without hating his father or mother, wife, children, brother, and sister, even his own life cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Which of you wishing to construct a tower does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if there is enough for its completion. Otherwise, after laying the foundation and finding himself unable to finish the work, the onlookers should laugh at him and say, this one began to build what he had no resources to finish. What king marching in battle would not first sit down and decide whether with 10,000 troops he can successfully oppose another king advancing upon him with 12,000 troops, but if not, while he is still far away, he will send a delegation and ask for peace terms. In the same way, every one of you who does not renounce his possessions cannot be my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Today, as we celebrate the life of St. John of the Cross, uh, seen as a, as a doctor of the church and a reformer of the uh, Discalc Car Carmelite order. Um, and uh, in his work with Therese of Avila, Teresa of Avila, they uh, worked together to bring both orders uh, to a way of drawing them back into that faithfulness in the life that they were intended for. And so um, as we celebrate his day, there's a thing about John that I think all of us can kind of connect to. Sometimes it sounds fearful in a way or confusing in a way, but it's John's great uh, uh, night of the soul. I remember when I was a teenager that um, I was a part of this group called um, Intercom. And we went off for a weekend and made this retreat. And then afterwards, we developed uh, communities. And we would meet with our communities on a, on a bi-monthly basis. And, uh, and uh, our leaders, uh, a man and a woman who would be our leadership for us throughout our high school years would try to help us along the way. And uh, I remember one time, um, the leader of our group, he, he uh, talked to me about this reality of John and the dark night of the soul in my own life and the cross that he uh, kind of felt that I bore in my life. Uh, I struggled a lot with education. Uh, and trying to be able to uh, get good grades. Um, recommended not even to be a priest by my own pastor. Uh, and he said, you know, sometimes just trying to embrace and understand the cross that we carry is a part of the dark night. It's, a, it's an embracing the cross rather than, than, than opposing the cross, trying to find comfort and how Jesus, who carried his cross for us, invites us to carry our own, but he walks with us in carrying that cross. And I'll tell you that, that it's been something that I still struggle with in trying to understand, because John is so deep in his language, both Spanish as well as uh, his poetry and the way he writes. Uh, sometimes... Um, hard to, to phantom everything he's talking about. But what he's really simply talking about is the, is the persecution he went through by his own community 
when he was trying to help it to grow back to what it was called to be, the resistance the community gave, imprisoning him in a room or a closet with no windows. I mean, I'd freak out if somebody did that to me. I don't think I could survive. But he embraced it. And it's very similar to something that I could begin to understand as I met a man who was incarcerated in prison down in Sparta County. And he chose self-isolation for the full time that he will be incarcerated. Meaning he lives in this little tiny cell with very little light, a hard bed, and no companionship around him. But he chooses that because he has worked at trying to embrace his own cross of life that he finds that he carries. And somehow the connection with me and, and my relationship with him, because I would spend time with him every time I would go down into the isolation chambers. I wanted to go there because those men in those chambers never saw a priest, never received the sacrament. They'd have other ministers come to them, but, but never a priest. And so I had made it my intent to go down there and finding this man and finding his desire to understand his embrace of what he was going through, somewhat by choice, somewhat with struggle. I offered him this reality of being a person who lives in sort of a contemplative way in sort of a, a way of, of uh, living truly in, not in isolation, but in solitude. And over the time that he and I were able to meet before COVID, one day he said to me, you know, Father, you saved me. And I said, not me, it's God who saved you. It's God who's brought you this far. But I would give him different works like John of the Cross, Teresa of Avila, uh, the monastic uh, contemplation of uh, the, the monastic life. And, and, and he's gone through his own conversion of this reality of transformation. And I think that's something of what John tries to tell us. That in embracing our crosses in life, whatever they might be, physical or emotional or spiritual, whatever it is that we struggle with in trying to understand God's love for us and how he tries to help us in our struggle, that that is John trying to tell us about the mystery of God's love for us and the where he draws us to through this experience, the experience of Christ's own suffering, we grow in an understanding of the selfless love that he bore for us. That's what I get out of what John has to say. Matter of fact, I was reading something on him earlier, and, 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 it, and it's still like, depending on who the author is, it, it, it becomes mystifying in a sense that it's like, okay, so what are you trying to tell me? And then an, another writing that I read, it comes out very clear that it's this embrace, this embrace of the love of God and, and the ways that we are to see our pain or our suffering as a means of embracing the cross with Christ and using it as a way of salvific love. As a young man, it was hard to understand and comprehend because who wants to suffer as a young, a young person? the more I grow in my age, this understanding of Christ, John of the Cross, of the mystical way in which he tries to move us, I think is, is a way in which we are all called to recognize no matter what it is, we embrace Christ because Christ has embraced that love for us, selflessly giving everything that we might have life. And I think that's what John embraced in his life, recognizing Christ's selfless sacrifice and John desiring to share in that sacrifice, rejection of the community, 
rejection by the community, rejection of, of his, his love of trying to help them to turn their hearts back to the intent of where they were to be. So today, as we celebrate John the Cross, he, he invites all of us to, to contemplate this understanding that we might follow the way of Christ. It might be a little way, it might be a tremendous way, whatever that might be. May we find the love of Christ helping us along our way. And I'm sorry if I was a little long today, but I'm very passionate about this thing. You know, it's, a, it's something that God passionately moves me towards. So I hope you've got something out of it. Today we turn to the Lord through the intercessions of John of the Cross. We ask God's mercy and his love for us this day. We pray for the Carmelite communities, especially the discount communities that exist throughout the world, that God might help them always to be a true presence of Christ's love for us, we pray to the Lord. We pray this day for the ways in which we are called to embrace the great love that God has for us uh, through the imitations of Mary and her being called the mother of sorrows, the imitation of Christ and his great love that he reveals to us. We pray to the Lord. We pray today for all those who suffer and have no way of finding relief or comfort or solace, that through faith and life and the love of God and our prayers for them, they may come to an understanding of the true way that John helps them in his spirituality, we pray to the Lord. We pray today for Lucy Nguyen Le Ho, for the repose of her soul, we pray to the Lord. We pray also today for those who do not pray or know how to pray. We pray to the Lord. And we pray today for those who are traveling for their safety, for their well-being in these holiday seasons. We pray to the Lord. We pray also for all those who are affected by the pandemic all those who have died from the pandemic, we pray to the Lord. And for the prayers that are in the silence of each one of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Father, mercy and love, hear our prayers on this feast of John of the Cross. Help us always to understand how he tries to help us to embrace you in all things. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, and become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the sacrificial gifts we offer, Almighty God, in commemoration of St. John of the Cross, and grant that we who celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's Passion may imitate what we enact through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, mighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the virgin mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by no means that already we rejoice in the mystery of the nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in praise. And so with the angels and saints, the thrones and dominions, with the hosts of the powers of heaven, we sing a hymn of your glories without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, gave you thanks. He broke and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which would be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, we celebrate the memorial of the death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Holy Father, with Gregory John, the Archbishop, with Joel and Bernard, his brother bishops, and all your clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who died in your mercy. Welcome them into light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with our blessed spouse, St. Joseph, with the blessed apostles, and with all your saints, especially John of the Cross, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life. We praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O oh, glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <clears throat> Jesus teaches us how to pray, so we use his words as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day. And by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all, we, be with you. We offer to one another that sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who has come to take away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. everyone watching, please join us in an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ.
remember one time meeting a Carmelite religious and trying to say that they were somehow in my own blindness uh, as a young man trying to say, oh, are you Franciscans? And they were like, no, we're Carmelites. That's part of John of the Cross that I didn't get, I guess. But that, that uh, great pride of being a Carmelite. And so <clears throat> the great humility that John teaches us. Uh, Mother Therese herself, in some of the writings that were written about her, say that the, she, she, she herself recognized the great dark night of the soul that she uh, struggled through in her own spiritual life. And so uh, people like her, who I admire, if she can make it, somehow I can as well. We pray, St. John of the Cross, pray for us. Let us pray. God, who in St. John have wonderfully made known the mysteries of the cross, graciously grant that through drawing strength from these sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. We go forward this day to love, serve, and to know the way of the Lord.